Thank you, Glenn, and thank you for this opportunity to join you. It's a wonderful audience here this afternoon. And what an appropriate day for this conversation with a historic uh, talk given by uh, Pope Francis just a few hours ago uh, at the Capitol in Washington. I was busy doing this provost thing, so I didn't get a chance to hear the talk, but I did catch a little bit of a news report on it right before I came over, and it sounds like uh, very fascinating topics and good discussion, and I look forward to actually listening to it uh, this evening when I get home and, and actually getting to hear more about it. So if you may know more than I do at this point about what was said and the topics covered, but it is a good day to, to be here, and, and what a, a time with, with this Pope to talk about what we're going to talk about today, about, I think, interfaith and sort of what I've learned, uh, my journey to Goshen, as I am new, so I'll, I'll share a little bit about that, because uh, faith is a big part of that. And, and I liked uh, Glenn's comment about storytelling, because that is something else I've learned from my friend Richard here, who has introduced us to this art of storytelling that we've used a few times uh, in some of our leadership discussions, and something I, I want to bring forth today is, is to tell a little bit of story about my Catholic faith and interfacing with Anabaptists in general and, and Mennonites specifically. So how did I get to Goshen College from... Actually, I grew up in Goshen, New York, so I feel like I've totally gone full circle from Goshen to Goshen, is how I've sort of framed a lot of my time here so far. And it's just kind of complete irony that I am back in Goshen. I understand, since I've been here, that there were some settlers that came from Goshen, New York, that actually helped name Goshen, Indiana. At least that's what I read about in the uh, Elkhart Truth. So if, if there is a dispute, we can take it up with the newspaper, but that's... Uh, a little bit of the, the heritage and the story that I've heard about the naming of, of Goshen, Indiana. And one of the things I found quickly is that there are a lot of parallels between the two communities, and maybe it is because of the, the settlers who came to name uh, the, the town. But the first one that I noticed very quickly being a Catholic is that in Goshen, New York, I grew up in St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church. And there happens to be a St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church just down Main Street here in Goshen, Indiana. So I thought I might have been an episode of the Twilight Zone or some alternate kind of parallel time uh, warp, but it, it is uh, now kind of fun that I grew up in St. John's and now I'm raising my daughters in just a different St. John's uh, in another Goshen. Uh, there's also a Goshen High School. There's been something going on with the naming of a mascot, which I don't know much about, but we were the Goshen Gladiators where I grew up. Um, uh, there's also some linkages with agriculture and also... I didn't get to go, but I understand there was a lot of harness racing at the Elkhart County Fair. Goshen, New York is the home of harness, horse, uh, harness racing, and the Harness Racing Hall of Fame, if you're ever in Goshen, New York, that's where it is. So check it out. It's a wonderful museum. And, and those are just a few of the little parallels that uh, I, I kind of find to be fun little stories about my time between Goshen and Goshen. But as I said, my spiritual journey as a young person started at St. John's the Evangelist Church in Goshen, New York. I uh, was born and raised Catholic. Both my parents were Catholic. And from there, I departed and went south to Bridgewater College in Virginia, which is a fellow Anabaptist uh, tradition school, brethren uh, background, and uh, got to learn a little bit about Anabaptism and from, the bre from the brethren perspective. But there was also a big Catholic community there because of James Madison University that was about five or so miles up the road, uh, which had a very active Catholic campus ministry, which I became involved with uh, as, a, as a young college student and continued my faith development there uh, with uh, some uh, active Catholics uh, of college age that, that did a lot of community service work uh, and outreach into the community with a very energetic and visionary a Catholic campus minister, Father John Grace, who now, I believe, has actually relocated to Chicago and is doing some similar work uh, as he's left Virginia. And the reason I, I bring up Father, Father John is also because of the interactions, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how um, the spiritual life has developed uh, for me through the eyes of uh, some influences I've had of leaders uh, that were Catholic priests. And I'll start with uh, my home parish, uh, where I was first shaped and really got a, had a strong family connection and relationship with a, a Mary Knoll priest. I, I don't know if you're very familiar with the Mary Knoll tradition, but uh, having grown up uh, in, in um, a great kind of mentorship relationship with a, with a former Mary Knoll priest 
who came to our parish at a time when we needed a lot of healing. There was a lot of division, and, and there had been one of the early abuse cases happened uh, at our parish in New York. And Father George, uh, who came to us, had rededicated his life to parish life. He had returned from mission work in Africa uh, following a very serious illness where they said he would not survive more than six months. Well, he lived much longer than six months and had gone on to serve in, in parish life for another additional 30 years uh, before passing away just a couple years ago. But what he brought was this idea of service and, and servant leadership is where I first kind of learned uh, that whole concept. And I understand from my, my friends here at Goshen, uh, as, as we look at our curriculum and what we do at the college, that Mennonites do a lot with their hands, and they're very experiential and applied, if you think about it from an education perspective. Well, the Mary Knoll tradition that I was first exposed to through Father George was also very hands-on and, and applied. As I said, our, our parish in New York needed some healing, and, and one of the first things Father George did was um, not just healing spiritually, but he was a hands-on person through his missionary work, and his background and interest was to beautify the parish. So he could often be found with a shovel or a rake in hand and some plants and some dirt and spreading mulch. So he was one that wanted to really get his hands on what was happening in the community. And that was something that really inspired me as a young person because it wasn't just so much what was going on through you know, the, the symbolism of the Mass and, and what happens every Sunday, but being able to be active and engaged in a community that needed to be healed. And that really set a model for me in that uh, that I've tried to draw on and, and to use in, in my spiritual development with, uh, with my own family and with others that I've, I've worked with. And, and I think Father George's, not only his hands-on approach and inspiration of being a servant leader in our parish, but inspiring me to go on to higher education and to continue to foster that educational development along with spiritual growth helped me uh, go on and um, grow, as a, grow as a person. Uh, and that, as I said, led me to, to Harrisonburg, uh, where I got involved with, again, with more hands-on and, and active uh, spiritual community uh, as, a, as a college student. And then I decided to stay in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia uh, for graduate school and got involved with Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church in Harrisonburg, which was kind of a fun experience, and we can talk more about it later because the second part of this, we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more about my my family life, but having uh, attended there a little bit as a college student, but then starting to raise my family there. Uh, and a couple of years ago, you Catholic priests do kind of rotate through every six to 12 years. Well, our pastor rotated out, and we brought a new pastor in who is uh, a K who's Kenyan uh, immigrant to this country. And um, Father Silvio uh, joined our parish, and we quickly became friends, and he uh, embraced our family as, as we did him, and, and he brought a new spiritual uh, dimension to our parish. And one of the things I took uh, a lesson from him early on is that, you know, it's very easy to try to accentuate differences between uh, Christians, and we often spend so much time nitpicking these little differences on who we are denominationally. And one of the charges he, he kind of gave all of us uh, many times was, why do we spend so much time worrying about differences when really we should be embracing each other and, and living the gospel and following the words of Jesus and, and not so much trying to find these little nuances, but, you know, we are really all of one um, belief and faith. And he didn't just talk about it, but he demonstrated it. And, and one kind of uh, image that really strikes me, because being Catholic, um, you know, it's very common that if you go into a Catholic church, you can quickly point out who's not Catholic. And, you know, sometimes we sort of look, oh, you know, they're not Catholic. And, and being part of a Mass, you often have to be Catholic. And one thing that Father Silvio did early on was he invited the choir from Eastern Mennonite School, so uh, the kind of a companion school, uh, to Bethany here. He invited their choir to come sing at our Mass on Sunday. And that is almost unheard of in a Catholic church to have an outside group come in and sing at a Mass. They could come another time, but not during Mass. Well, Father Silvio threw that tradition out the window. And at the end of the Mass, he asked the, the choir to rise and, you know, asked our community to really welcome them and said, you know, here, as I've said, you know, kind of 
demonstrating his belief that it's not that we're different, but we are all the same. And, and that really struck me and stayed with me uh, and having served in some uh, leadership and volunteer capacities of what we try to do as a parish of, uh, of Blessed Sacrament in Harrisonburg. And then as I kind of went through this process and journey of coming here to Goshen, I've brought with me in all of my experiences and have been so welcomed by uh, the community here at the college. Um, I'm learning a lot uh, just since being here for a few months. Uh, uh, President Brenneman and others have been very quick to uh, talk about religion and faith, which is something I didn't get working at a large public university and part of the reason why I wanted to come to a small ca uh, Christian college. Uh, the ability to share faith and ideas. Uh, they, they've pointed me to articles and to books that I've, I've gotten to, to kind of start to digest and learn and really appreciate more of those similarities between us, as, as Father Sylvia reminded us many times uh, in, in Harrisonburg. And just another little funny tale before I turn it over to Judith about kind of my transition into this role here in Goshen is uh, about... Two or three weeks prior to my arrival, I received an email from President Brenneman sort of starting to welcome me to the community and said, I know I wasn't going to bother you much. I know you're busy, but I had an idea. The Mennonite Church USA Conference is going on in Kansas City, and I really would like to invite you to join us. So why don't you put off setting up your office on your first day and get on an airplane and join me in Kansas City? So being the new person, I said, well, I can't say no to the boss. So... <laughs> I'm on board. Uh, so the, my first day uh, on the job, so to speak, was spent uh, traveling to Kansas City to join uh, the convention that was going on. And I really didn't know much at that point. So being naive, I arrived in Kansas City ready to go and had a great first day and, and met uh, a number of constituencies, including a real excited group of incoming first year students to Goshen that were attending the, the convention. And we had an alumni reception. But the following day was a very sobering day and, and really opened my eyes and gave me a new appreciation for uh, this, this discernment and kind of educational inquiry that goes on in the Mennonite Church. Well, Jim then invited me to join kind of this session as an observer for um, some of the votes and, and this discernment that, were, that was going on through the delegate session. So we sat and attended and very uh, moving and passionate speeches were given and a lot of discussion was going on and votes and there was even a protest and all sorts of things. So I got to quickly learn that it's very different and at one point I leaned over to Jim and I said, this is one of those moments where it's easier to just have a Pope who can make a decree, <laughs> you know, we say Hail Mary and move on. But so, and he kind of smiled and said, yeah, sometimes that might not be a bad thing. Uh, but I really did uh, learn a lot and, and welcome that process because I, I really appreciated that, that inquiry that went on and, and really the, the passion and the grace uh, and the forbearance that has been given. And I know it's been a very divisive time, but hopefully there will be continued healing uh, and, and this process um, goes forward in a good direction. And I really uh, started to learn and appreciate more about the, the tradition of, of uh, the Mennonite Church at that moment as well, and welcome more opportunities to engage uh, with with our, our, our new friends and neighbors and colleagues here at the college. So I wanted to leave plenty of time for question and answer and also to, to hand a, the podium over to, to Judith where maybe we can handle questions at the end if, if that makes sense. And uh, thanks again for your time.